everybody, it's Lisa from Vintage Gypsy. Um, I've done a couple videos on painting some of your knickknacks in your house. Um, maybe it doesn't match your decor anymore. Um, I had an owl the last time. I used some Tiffany paint and I used my black wax so it would match now. Um, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the chalk style paint that I use. Um, it's called Heirloom Traditions. They have another line there as well called Ventiques. Um, this is Heirloom Traditions, their line. They tend to have a lot more colors, a lot of vari variations of the colors. Um, they can also do custom colors for retailers. And this is the Ventiques line. I carry both in my shop. Um, I keep some on, I keep a lot on hand. Some people like to actually come out and see paint versus seeing it on one of these little paint chips. Um, so I do have it available for sale. You can also buy it online at heirloomtraditionspaint.com. Um, pretty fast shipping. Shipping is very reasonable. I think it's over $75 your order. It's free. Which, when I was buying it, it wasn't like that. Um, I am a retailer now. I've used it for probably four or five years before I decided to sell it. I wanted to test it out to see if I really liked it. And I do. I will probably never go back to using latex paint again. Um, I use it to paint furniture, paint fabric, um, paint t-shirts. Wooden signs is a big thing that I do. Um, but you can also do concrete, um, ceramic. You can paint ceramic stuff with it. Um, glass, metal, formica. Um, leather furniture. We actually have a specific um, leather furniture refinisher too. It's called Relove. So if you have a couch that's old and still in pretty good shape, you can just paint it with this. And yes, it's permanent. It doesn't come off. Um, I painted this t-shirt with it. Yeah. I've washed it ten times. The paint has not come out. If you decide to paint fabric, there is another step, but we won't get into that today. Um, I'm going to show you how to use the paint, and once you use the paint, how to seal it with the wax, whether it be soft wax versus liquid wax. If it's something you're going to be putting outside or having a lot of heavy use on, so like a tabletop or an end table, I would use um, the top coat that we have because it makes it way more durable. I do have one piece that's already painted. This is called a la mode. It is in the Heirloom Traditions line. And then with this paint, what you can do is there's pretty much no sanding, no prep at all. That's why I really like it because I am very busy. Honestly, I'm just kind of lazy when it comes to this stuff. I was very um, overwhelmed at painting furniture, wanting to even refinish pieces in my house until I found this paint. Um, if it has a high gloss on it, I will use a liquid declosser that I buy down at Lowe's so I don't have to do so much sanding. But it is easy. So if you paint it, wax it to seal it, you don't like it, paint over it again. I have one dresser that I had this vision in my head of what it should look like and it doesn't. And I painted it five times. It's easy. I just got there with a brush and paint over it. Typically you're going to be using these brushes. We have three different sizes. Um, it goes a lot faster with these brushes. Faster and these use a lot less paint than these. My friend in Florida, who also sells the paint, she has a little shop called the Softy Dog down there at Fort Myers Beach, told me one day, she said, put your big girl panties on, use these brushes. I'm lazy, I don't like to clean them, that's the whole purpose. I will never do it again. I was able to paint that dresser in less than 20 minutes because I got to use the big brush. These I used to demo with a little bit. It's like I said, I'm lazy. I get to throw them away when I'm done. I don't wash them out. So, um, if you actually are going to start painting things, even wooden signs, I would suggest that you get some of these brushes, okay? Um, in order to apply the paint, it's very easy. Never open up your container and dip your brush into it. Um, it will, you can cause contamination. Some people can do it and get away with it. I'm not one of those people. I'm not that lucky, okay? So in order to paint, I usually, I usually look like this. I just pour a little bit on my um, famous paint tray. And then when you paint over it, you can go stroke-wise like this if you like to see stroke marks. Some people don't. 
I don't mind them so much because the wax picks up a lot of that detail, but if you want that smooth finish, we use something called stippling. Remember years ago when we were big stencilers? You know, I used to have apples all over my kitchen. You stipple it. When you stipple it, it causes the paint to lay flat and you also get better coverage this way. So a lot of times people use chalk style paint and they brush over it like this and it takes two or three coats. If you stipple it tends to cover very quickly. So see you can cut see I'm covering over that Tiffany with a lighter color and it's going over pretty well. So that's basically how you apply the paint. Okay. Typically dries 15-20 minutes depending on the humidity, how hot it is. Um, if you're out in the sun, it's going to dry a lot faster, so just remember that. Same way with the wax, too. This piece I've already painted. Um, I usually go down to Lowe's, and I will get these little detail boards to practice with, which is a good thing to start doing if you want to start painting some of your furniture. That way you can play with the waxes and the colors and see what you like versus what you don't like. So here's my piece. Now with this paint, you can paint it, say if you're going to paint a piece of furniture, and you let it dry about 20 minutes. It's not fully 100% dry until it's back to room temperature. So when I touch this piece, I just painted it a little bit ago, it's still very cold because it is water-based. So there's still a lot of water in there. So you can go ahead and wax it and do all that stuff with it, but to let it cure with soft wax, I give it a couple days. If it's something that you really want to paint in your house, I will usually paint it and wait a day or so to wax it to make sure it's fully dry depending on the weather like in the winter time here in Ohio it dries a lot slower versus being in Florida. Now I've shown you black wax. We have all kinds of soft waxes. We also have this fancy product that's a liquid wax which is really great. It's a huge time saver. Basically you just paint it on and wipe it off. I usually will pour this in a bowl versus spraying it because it tends to clog the sprayer a little bit. I put it on a plate take one of these little brushes, wipe it on, and wipe it off. It's very easy to do. Let me see if I can... So see, I take it off. And I'm going to pour it in something. Got my smiley mug. I'm going to take this brush, dip it down in there. It's pretty watery. And I'm going to wipe it on. So that's basically using your liquid wax. Now you're going to make sure you need to have some of these rags on hand and you wipe it off and you're done. This will cure almost instantly when it's done. Soft wax takes a couple days to cure. Soft wax you can also blend a lot more. So, if I want to use my black, this what I used on here is antique brown. That's the Ventiques line. So a lot of people like that rustic, you know, primitive look. They paint it white and then they put brown over it. That's exactly what you'll get, okay? It also comes in a soft wax, okay? So we're going to use this. Oh, put the wrong lid on it. I'm going to use black wax because it's my favorite. You take your brush, you work it in there, whether you're using this brush or this brush. And I'm going to go to the next section. This is the best way to test a piece of furniture, what it's going to look like when it's done. So we're going to use just strictly one color of paint and I'm going to use different waxes. When you're waxing, if your product or your piece has a lot of detail in it, take your brush and work it down in there. And it's just like the Karate Kid movie. You wax on, wax off. So we have antique brown and black. So we still have just one color of paint, three different colors. Okay. We even have A blue wax. We have like 13 different colored waxes which is awesome. But then we just have the standard clear wax because a lot of people just want to paint over the paint and show the vibrancy of the paint. You can mix these waxes on top of each other. So I could mix, you can see how the brown and the black has faded in together. If you're ever afraid that you've put too much of the dark waxes on, just simply go over it with your clear wax and it'll pull some of that back off. So don't ever be afraid of using the colored waxes. We also have a really cool gray one. And this new one that I have, they've had it for a while, but I've just started playing with it, is rusted metal. And you can actually use it on some of the paint colors and it'll truly look like rusted metal. So here's one of our, actually our fancy brushes. So see how much easier it is to get wax on that versus doing this. That wastes a lot of my wax. 
I use this little thing. I just dip it like that. This is rusted metal. And it's actually a smoother um, feel when you put it on. Like when I go to put this down in there, I don't have to work as hard to get it in the creases. And there's rusted metal. So you can see you can have one paint color. And you can actually have 13 different colors or variations of it, depending on the color wax that you use. Okay? Now that will cure, the soft wax will, in about mm, 24 to 48 hours. Which means don't touch it. Don't wipe it off with chemicals or anything like that. Just let it sit there for a while. Remember, if you're going to do this on a tabletop, make sure you get the best coat, um, chalk, best, I can't even talk to me, our chalk top coat. I can't talk, forget it. Anyway, you can find it online. Um, it is our top coat, and it works very well with our chalk style paint. Um, it is all water-based, so don't go out and get, like, poly and put on there because, yes, it is going to yellow. So make sure that you're getting our top coat that we have in our lines because it will help um, seal your paint, especially if you're going to put a sign outside or something like that. Um, it is no different than any other paint. You can be an artist with this paint. Um, I do a lot of variations in color when I do signs, and I also like a lot of variations when I do furniture. I will paint two or three colors underneath and then paint a color over top. You can either sand it to distress it, or you can use wet distressing, which doesn't cause any mess at all. Um, if you do sand it, uh, it's not like typical latex paint. When you sand latex paint um, with the sandpaper, it tends to be gummy, or if it sits outside in the sun, it gets all gummy and bubbly, actually peel off. Um, this chalk style paint becomes almost one with the wood. So when you go to sand it, when I used to get in trouble in school, we had to put the erasers together at the end of the day, you know, pound them outside. That's the same type of dust that comes off of this. So you could do this sitting in your living room if you want to wet distress it. Do it in a basement, you know, that way it doesn't cause that much of a mess. There is no fumes to it. Um, it's very workable. It's very forgiving paint. Like I said, if you mess it up, you don't like it, just paint right over it. It's not a big deal. You don't freak out with this paint. It's very easy to use. It's very user friendly. It's, it's truly very forgiving paint. Um, now, what you're thinking is, oh, I'm going to run to Lowe's. I'm going to run to the Home Depot. I'm going to run to Walmart or Hobby Lobby or any of those other chain stores, and I'm going to get me some chalk paint. It is not chalk style paint. Most of that, that if you can go anywhere and have it mixed or it's sitting out on their shelves, like my local Lowe's has it. Don't yell at me, Lowe's. Um, it is, they list it as chalk paint. If you read it, it's a flat or matte paint. It is still latex based. This is not latex based. Okay, This is actually made from organic, organic compounds. Um, so it's a much better choice. It's non-toxic paint, so you don't have to worry about it. Like my puppy's out here all the time with me, and I don't ever have to worry about her getting into the paint and getting hurt with it. Because um, sometimes she walks around with it on her nose because she's nosy and sticks it on whatever I'm painting at the time. Um, so, remember, if you want to order it, you can either come out to the store. I am out in Hillsboro. You can also get a hold of me on Facebook. Um, I do live in Ohio. But if you want to order some online, you're welcome to. They ship it right to your door. Like I said, it's heirloomtraditionspaint.com. Use all capital letters, Vintage Gypsy, um, at checkout and it'll give you 10% off your order. You're welcome to get a hold of me on Facebook if you have questions about it. I also offer um, chalk style painting workshops. We do furniture workshops. We do wood sign workshops, um, different kind of craft workshops. The only paint I use is this brand of paint. I don't use any other paint. Um, I educate people on the type of paint and the difference that it is versus using acrylic paint. This also does not peel. For the sign makers that are out there and they have trouble with using you know, the little bottles of paint that you can buy in the craft section. Um, I had that experience with that and what they did when it would dry, it was peeled off like Elmer's glue does when it's all dry. So I switched over to chalk style paint and I have never looked back. I do have a website, it's VintageGypsy73.com and I also have a business page on Facebook if you need to get a hold of me. It's also where I'm going to be posting the videos. Um, it is just Vintage Gypsy on Facebook so you can reach me that way. If you have any questions at all about this, just message me or get a hold of me. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. depends on how busy I am, but I typically do go back and answer my messages. Or you can comment on this video and I will get it. Um, 
any questions at all, do not be afraid to take this paint and tackle painting something. I suggest start small, get your little knickknack out of your house. Some people call them chotskis, which sounds really cool. Um, start with a little a little sign and a stencil and go from there. Um, and, and see how you like it. I, like I said, will never go back. You cannot convince me to use any other paint. So, I hope you guys have a good night. I hope you've learned a little something today. If you haven't, I'm sorry. I'll try to do another video in a week or so. Maybe we'll talk a little bit more about... Um, different waxes maybe or I'll do um, maybe another piece out of my house that I'm redoing um, I have a picture frame that I would like to redo um, it doesn't match right now it's too light of a teal so I'd like to switch that out so um, you guys have a nice night I will talk to you later bye bye